Well, hey, hi, and hello. My name's Michelle, and welcome back to the Drag Queen Story Corner. Here on this channel, we're going to read books, tell jokes, and learn something new every day. We're going to upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So make sure you like, subscribe, and share this channel with all of your friends. Alright, before we get into today's story, we have to stop over by the Learning Corner. It's Tuesday, so Peppa Mache is there, and we are going to learn some more Spanish. Alright, boys and girls, today in the Learning Corner, Peppa Mache is back, and we are learning Spanish again today. I want to know, Peppa, how do you say I love you in Spanish? Well, that's very easy. You say, te amo. Te amo. Si. Like, te amo, Peppa. Oh, I love Peppa. And to respond to that, you would say, gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Si. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Peppa. Absolutely. Thank you. Try to use Spanish in your everyday life. Thank you so much, Peppa Mache, for that fabulous Spanish lesson. Each and every Tuesday here on the Drag Queen Story Corner, we are going to learn a new Spanish word. So make sure you subscribe so you'll stay in the know. Now, how about we get into today's story? Today, we will be reading You Are My Friend by Amy Reed. This is a story about Mr. Rogers. It's about the beginning of his life and how his show came about. So if you have this book, go ahead and pause the video so you can go get it off the shelf and we can read it together. If not, ask your parents to get this book for you at the end of the story. Let's read. This is You Are My Friend by Amy Reed. In the springtime when everything was growing and green, Freddie Rogers had to stay inside. Flowers made him sniffle. Plants made him sneeze. Fred had allergies. Freddie had other illnesses too. He spent many days in bed. Sometimes he had to stay inside for weeks at a time. Being sick made it hard to make friends. Often Freddie felt sad or mad, lonely or scared. He kept his feelings inside, but he wanted someone to know how he felt. Freddie found that he could talk about his feelings with puppets. He gathered them around on his bed. That way it seemed as though as if it was a whole group of friends. When Freddie went to school, sometimes he was bullied. Neighborhood boys yelled mean words at him as they chased him down the street. Grown-ups told Freddie to pretend the mean words didn't hurt, but they did. Hiding his feelings didn't work. They just grew stronger. Sometimes when he was all alone, Freddie cried. Freddie found it difficult to speak out about his feelings, but he learned he could express them on the piano. If he was angry, he played loud, low notes that sounded like thunder. He played high, sweet notes for happiness. Freddie felt better after he shared his feelings through his music. Freddie's mother gave him a way to deal with worried feelings. She told him to look for people who were helping. Freddie began to look for helpers right in his own neighborhood. He liked to visit Mama Belle Frampton. She welcomed him and showed him how to make toast sticks all by himself. Freddie liked the good feeling of learning something new from his neighbor. Fred's grandfather, McFeely, was an important friend. Fred loved to visit his grandfather's farm with its big stone wall. One day, Fred went into the room where all the adults were talking. No one looked his way. Fred asked if he could walk on the big stone wall. Then everyone looked his way. Most of the grown-ups said, no, you might get hurt. But Grandpa McFeely said, yes. Fred climbed and walked and then even ran on the wall. When at last Fred came back inside, he had skinned his knee, but he was happy. His grandpa told Fred that he liked him just the way he was. He said Fred was special and that just by being himself. Fred made the day special too. Fred let those words seep deep inside him. And as he thought about them, he felt braver. He began to speak up. He tried new things. He reached out and made friends, even with people who weren't like him. One day when Fred was grown up, he saw a television show program. People were throwing pies in each other's face. Fred did not like the pie throwing, but he thought television would be wonderful. What if instead of people fighting, TV could show people helping one another. Right then, Fred decided that what he wanted to do. Fred created a television show for children. He remembered of all the people who had helped him as he was growing up. 
He thought of his neighbor, Mama Bell Frampton, who was always glad to see him. He wanted to share that good feeling with children everywhere. Fred wrote a happy, welcoming song to sing at the beginning of each show. He called his program Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and he called the people who watched it his neighbors. At first, Fred felt shy to be in front of the camera, but he found out that his grandpa was right. Just by being himself, Fred made his show special. Fred told stories with puppets. He played music that he wrote. He even invited helpers to the show. <laughs> that way, they like to explain how things work. Fred took his television camera to visit a farmer who had milk cows. He asked a friend to show how people dig with big machines. Another helper played the cello, and another shared how to cook. Fred explained to his neighbors that the feelings were important. You could talk about them, or you could show them your feelings in other ways. If you were mad, you could pound clay or run fast. If you were sad, you could sing a song soft and low. If you were happy, you could dance. Fred helped people learn like themselves. He helped them to be good neighbors. Fred never forgot how his grandpa made him feel. Over and over, he would look right into the camera and pass along the important words that changed his life. You've made this day a special day just by being you. There's no person in the whole world like you, and I like you just the way you are. That was You Are My Friend by Amy Reed. That was a great story about Mr. Rogers. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Drag Queen Story Corner. All right, boys and girls, you know before we go, we have to do the joke of the day. Are you ready? Here we go. What is the best season to jump on a trampoline? What is the best season to jump on a trampoline? Springtime! <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining me here in the Drag Queen Story Corner. My name is Michelle, and we upload videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So make sure you like and subscribe to this channel, and we will see you here again on Thursday. Have a great day. Bye!